this machine before me is a marvel of modern engineering. It's the Dr. Zaber Benny PC. We're gonna say Dr. Zaber for this video because I'm a dumb American. So this is my Dr. Zaber PC. I've already sort of gotten a head start on this video. This is a mini ITX computer that's very compact, but still pretty easy to work on. And that's the thing that I like about it. So having worked on other mini ITX machines, um, I don't really like when it's time to upgrade because I kind of like upgrading my home machine a lot, but I also kind of don't want to um, <laughs> spend a lot of time like completely taking it apart and putting it back together and taking it apart and putting it back together. So my existing home machine was based around a Gigabyte AB350. So this is a B350 motherboard. It's Ryzen, it's got 16 gigabytes of memory. This is a pretty solid little board. It's an inexpensive ITX motherboard. This motherboard would be fine for the 3000 series Ryzen CPUs, which is what I'm upgrading to. I'm up upgrading to a Ryzen 7 3700X. It's a 65 watt TDP, so it should pair pretty well with this case because I'm not planning to use, you know, like 120 millimeter all-in-one cooler. I'm gonna be using the Noctua AM4 cooler. And this, this cooler was actually sent to me by, um, Daz slash Joe. That's how he signs his emails. So thanks. Daz slash Joe uh, for the cooler because it's the specific AM4 version of the cooler. So for my previous configuration, I ran without this fan and I did a larger fan. So the larger fan really helped cooling and that kind of thing. I've been so impressed by the 3700X and it's miles faster than the 2700 that I had in here before. So I'm swapping the 2700 for the 3700X. And this is gonna be a beastly little machine. Look what I picked up from Micro Center. Yes, this is <laughs> this is a present for me. This is an X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. And thanks, Michael. One of two reasons that I got this is PCI Express 4.0. PCI Express 4.0 will give me this, which is the Aorus NVMe SSD. Two terabytes. This is a two terabyte SSD. It's got the giant copper slug heatsink, but you know, the M.2 is on the back of the board. What we're gonna do is uh, heat sink that sucker to the case. We'll talk about that when we get to it. The Dr. Zaber risers work. With PCI Express 4, that is. We get the 5700 XT. Now, there are some software teething issues around the 5700 XT, but I think the 5700 XT is a good fit for me. Uh, I am eagerly awaiting AIB partners to upgrade the blower cooler, but I didn't find the blower cooler to be particularly terrible. Your mileage may vary. Not only do we have the M.2 on the back of the board, we also have another M.2 under this heatsink with a fan both of which are PCI Express 4. Woot! At the rear aisle of this motherboard, we have the built-in uh, shield. We have two HDMI and a display port, which will be great for future APUs that hopefully are eight cores. We have six USB connections, one of which is type C. Two of these are USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabit, and then we've got four USB 3 ports. There's also mic, line out, and line in, and then we've got our Wi-Fi connections. Now, I might have liked to see more audio connections at the back here, but the front panel is pretty good on this board, so the front panel connections are pretty awesome. I'm just not gonna be able to use those front panel connections in the Dr. Zaber build. Just on visual inspection, we can see that the VRM area has been upgraded quite a bit, and there's this huge chunk of metal that will act like a thermal capacitor uh, for that VRM. So the VRM cooling here is definitely much improved over the B350, but it's a pricier motherboard to boot. One slightly disappointing thing is that we've only got a single USB 3.0 front panel header and a USB 2 front panel header. I think there's probably enough room here to have two USB 3 front panel headers and just do away with the extra USB 2 header. This motherboard also features two four pin fan headers. So getting it the first M.2, at least the one on top of the board, not really a big deal. You just take these two screws out. That's what I was hoping for. Now I know what you're thinking. You idiot. This Aorus SSD comes with this giant honking heatsink. It'll never fit. <laughs> oh, how wrong you are. Let's do a test fit real quick just to show you. So, as you can see, the giant copper heatsink fits in there, no problem. And you've got a fan. I mean, what more could you ask for? This is all of the M.2 awesomeness that you could possibly ever need in one small and awesome package. Paste foo. The legend continues. 
Look, Noctua does not mess around with heat sinks. Nice. So for our power supply, it's an EVGA 550 watt power supply. They are 65 watt TDP, even with a little bit of over, I mean, cooling is gonna be the issue there, but this whole package is not gonna use more than 150 watts. And this is gonna be another two, 300 at most. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Now just for giggles, for this back M.2, you could use a really thick thermal pad and actually physically thermally connect your M.2 to the actual outside of the case. So the whole, the whole case would act like a heat sink, at least the back part of it. I'm not gonna do that just yet. So there we have it, the final build on our Dr. Zaber PC. We've got our Radeon 5700 XT, did a full separate review on that. We got our cool Noctua L9 cooler. This is for AM4 sockets. It can breathe pretty well. May still need to beef up the fan, but how exactly I do that? I've got a little less room to work with in here because the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi ITX motherboard uh, has a lot more heat sink than the AB350 that I came from. So there's not quite as much room for me to put the big 120 millimeter Noctua fan. Also got the Trident Z Royal memory with like the, the RGB effect. And there's a little bit of an RGB effect on the motherboard as well. You can kind of see it in the, uh, in the air vents a little bit. Of course, I've also got the EVGA 550 watt power supply and our, you know, Aorus Extreme PCI Express 4.0 NVMe that's just kicking ass and taking names at two terabytes in size. Now I can run a RAID 0 if I want, or a RAID 1 of NVMe. I'm not really sure about that on the AMD side of things. On the Linux thing side of things, it's not gonna be any problem for me because I can just use Linux MD multi-disc, and that's what I'd recommend if you're looking into doing this. But whew, let me tell you, those PCI Express 4 SSDs, uh, if you're doing something like a giant unruly Node.js project, and you've got the PCI Express 4 interface, and you can just run through a billion tiny files, and you've got these particular SSDs, it handles that workload really, workload really well. And the Aorus, you know, the X570 Pro Wi-Fi, this thing is beastly. It's eight phases of direct VRM power. It is a massive VRM upgrade. I could probably run the 12 core in here if I could figure out a way to cool it. This has got Intel Gigabit LAN, it's got Wi-Fi 6. Uh, so those are a lot of the things that really tick the boxes for me in terms of a powerful ITX motherboard. Dual M.2, that's nice. And the way that the M.2s are placed on this thing, one has active cooling with a fan, and the other one can be heat synced directly to the Dr. Zaber case with a thick enough thermal pad. So, I mean, that plus eight phases, plus dual channel ECC support, yes, because Ryzen. I mean, what's not to love? So this system, fully PCI Express 4.0, pretty much fully seven nanometer, except for the IO die. Got the seven nanometer GPU, got my seven nanometer chiplet. Got, uh, got a lot of really exciting pieces of technology going on in this thing. I've even got fan profiles. Well, I've set up a fan profile. The chipset fan doesn't come on unless the NVMe is adding a ton of heat or uh, unless I've got the other NVMe connected, which right now I don't because reasons because I don't have the second NVMe in here if I actually do that. Yeah, and the case is the Dr. Zaber Sentry, of course, which is, you know, really awesome. But so the case is something that Dr. Zaber sent me to mess around with and the other parts like the uh, the Radeon GPU are from the press kit. The 3700 is from the press kit as well, but the uh, 3600 that's in here now, that's retail from Micro Center and I also bought another 3700X and I bought a 3900X because we're going to use them. We like doing builds. I like how this build turned out. It's pretty nice. If you uh, have any pictures of your own build or you want to talk shop with PCI Express 4, like the riser, the riser seems to be PCI Express 4 compatible. So that's nice. Uh, it's probably a little bit rolling the dice with PCI Express 4 compatibility on risers. For my particular riser with this particular graphics card, it seemed to work. I don't want to universally say it's going to work for every riser and on every Dr. Zaber Sentry because PCI Express 4 is newer than this case. Uh, worst case scenario, you can get a PCI Express 4.0 riser. They're a little rare right now, but they are being made in China. Just a matter of knowing what to search for and ordering the right thing, but it's good to go. Like I say, it's Wendell. Wait. Guess you shouldn't touch the graphics card while it's running. Woo! 
Like I say, I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm rambling too much. It's time to go catch in level one forums. I don't have any idea what I'm doing.